At this moment, I want to welcome Christina Escorbe. She is the VP of Government Affairs at Velodyne. And as I mentioned, Velodyne is only the sponsor but producer of this event. Christina, greetings and welcome to the World Safety Summit 2021. Good morning, Charlie. Thank you for that background and the warm introduction. Um, and pop culture references aside, it has been a long, uh, a long stretch. And so uh, we we recognize, um, you know, remote conferences are not as scintillating as they once were at the beginning of all of this. But we welcome our audience, and it's my pleasure to open the fourth annual World Safety Summit today. Um, we also welcome our colleagues and professionals joining us from across the transportation, governmental, and private sector. What we're doing today is not so different than the original purpose of the summit, which is to provide a focused outlet to evaluate autonomy and its interrelation with safety in our society. But if the past 20 months have demonstrated anything, it's that this kind of conversation is perhaps most critical to have now more than ever. The global pandemic has amplified problems across the spectrum in transportation, in emergency response, in our supply chain, across communication systems, in our economy, our health and our livelihoods. An inability to access transit, to make it to work, to keep your business running because you can't order supplies or guarantee shipment, to ensure access to care and that food is going to be on the table. These are foundational considerations for how we function and thrive as a society. Despite the disruptions posed by the pandemic, innovation has not ceased. At the same time, our clear dependence on traditional technology and methods in many respects, which have not worked, should call as a, serve as a call to action. First of all, on our roadways, Last week, we heard from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, as many of you know. They, they reported the single largest six-month increase of traffic fatalities ever recorded, with an increase of 18.4% since the same time in 2020. This represents over 20,000 vehicle-related traffic fatalities in the first half of 2021, just six months. Now, while we saw more people returning to the road this year, uh, during the pandemic, many fewer people were on the roads driving their cars, and these severe injuries and fatalities continued to increase inexplicably. Rightfully so, DOT Secretary Buttigieg labeled this situation a crisis. NHTSA reports these statistics are largely due to drivers engaging in riskier driving behavior. But how do we begin to counter these driver behavior issues and decision making? We can start by focusing on the problems we know we can help address. For example, the majority of pedestrian fatalities on the road, approximately 76% happen at night in low light or no light conditions. People of color are disproportionately represented in these statistics with black pedestrians being twice as likely to be killed in vehicle crashes. A high resolution sensor like LIDAR, which we're focused on, which can do things like see at night, can make all the difference in countering these trends. Many of us had kids running through dark neighborhoods last weekend for Halloween. And that kind of technology can be as simple as your vehicle seeing that child crossing the street at night when you cannot. It's a real thing. Autonomous vehicles and advanced driver assistance systems or ADAS are, are real technologies that hold tremendous potential and safety benefits for, for the roadway. But more work needs to be done before these life-saving advancements are accessible for all. Second, I'm sure most of our audience today is familiar with the statistic that transportation is the single largest contributor of pollution in the US. Very important discussions are happening today in the transition to an electrified fleet, like Charlie mentioned, including electric vehicles, delivery solutions, and transit options. But even then, access, uh, addressing emissions and roadway efficiency does not just involve your car or bus. Transportation is an entire ecosystem involving all parts and users of the roadway. Intelligent transportation systems like those our second panel will explore today can yield exponential benefits from technologies that identify vulnerable road users like pedestrians and cyclists and making the roadway safer for them to reducing unnecessary delays and congestion with precise timing of lights and signals that can manage traffic or send accident notifications to drivers. We can see further reduction in congestion 
by way of fewer vehicle crashes due to these advanced safety features on vehicles. Finally, this is the first time, as Charlie mentioned in World Safety Summit, that we're exploring how autonomous technology is revising the safety landscape for humans through advanced robotics. I briefly addressed environmental sustainability, but that merely scratches the surface in how technology is bringing intangible safety benefits to human sustainability, whether enabling emergency workers to observe or respond to a disaster remotely, to perform dangerous inspections by drone or robot instead of going into those situations yourself, or accessing locations otherwise inaccessible to humans, Technology is increasing the safety of our workforce and our public every day. The human factor should not be lost in the innovation narrative. We are thrilled to engage the public and learn more about how these technologies are being used today to save our lives and improve our lives. So one point that one of our keynote speakers who will be presenting today raised at last year's summit that has stuck with me is that a real safety culture embraces safety not as something you can merely prioritize, but as a core value that never changes. Advancements in innovation should not be viewed in, as, in a vacuum for that reason. These core values that autonomous technology serves, safety, efficiency, and sustainability are interrelated. The recent breakdown in our supply chain is a perfect example. We are seeing extreme congestion, due to ships stuck waiting to access our ports, disruption and delays in the shipment of critical goods. We're seeing truck driver shortages to deliver cargo, which is exacerbating an already stressed workforce, rail and warehouse capacity issues, ships losing cargo, increasing waste and the price of goods, and now people working to keep ports open around the clock. If anything, this shows us how our system is connected. More importantly though, not a single one of these issues cannot be addressed through technology and automation. Autonomous trucks can ease the driver shortage and keep goods moving. Sensor-based technologies can help vessels dock and unload safely and move goods through that system with high levels of precision. Industrial robotics can aid warehouse efficiency and help maintain continuity of operations. LIDAR specifically is playing a dominant role in the automation of ship cranes. In addition, more than 5,000 LIDAR enabled automated guide, guided vehicles or AGVs are currently in use in ports around the world to provide a safe, efficient navigation in those systems. But that's not enough. It would be short-sighted to try to fix an entire system by addressing any one of these issues on their own. At the same time, broad adoption of technology across these platforms is not a solution we will see overnight. It will require three things, investment of time to learn, resources and public support to deploy, and cooperation and public trust to grow for technology to serve these core values at scale. At Velodyne, we are focused on how LiDAR can make safety accessible for all. But LiDAR is only one very small piece of the autonomous technology universe. Our regulators, policymakers, the media, and the public all share responsibility for the future of innovation. And that's not only to support these advancements for the benefits and security that they will bring, but also to understand the technology and how to use it responsibly. So this conversation is today for, and it's critical to support both of these concepts. And we welcome your close attention to our panels and our keynote speakers. Um, that we have with us today who are doing really big things and really great things across automation to move us into a safer, more efficient and sustainable future. Thank you, Charlie. It was an inspired uh, introduction and I am really looking forward to the rest of the panels today. Thank you, Christina. And you brought up some great points that I'm looking forward to going over a little bit more. Uh, most dishearteningly was the, uh, the, U the uh, Department of Transportation release of the new showing of the uh, the fatalities out there because again we've been working on this issue of you know ADAS and and again the sensors being implemented into the vehicles for years now and we keep waiting for that downturn and, and we haven't seen it so it's so, so darn frustrating yeah that's right and and you know we really applaud the administration and all the states who are in and communities who are focused on this um and looking for opportunities to test and um, you know, take these technologies more seriously uh, to address those, those um, really, really disheartening, as you put it, um, statistics. And as someone who has 
kids running into the street, uh, you know, whether I, I, you know, try to stop them or not, it's, it's a very real scary figure. And we've all had situations where we've encountered distracted drivers. So we're really looking forward to being a part of that discussion in the countermeasures um, that NHTSA has already outlined to address those, those uh, fatality and injury estimates. I mentioned we'd follow up with everyone that has registered for this event and, and I'll suggest and uh, we'll see if we can get the link uh, to the NHTSA uh, press release. It just came out a couple of days ago and again so timely that we'll continue that conversation through today. Mostly talking about safety but as you indicated the other factors that maybe we can accomplish through this whether it's congestion and, and pollution other things that have, have certainly plagued the transportation uh, sector for so very many years. And then the, the, the findings or, or the experience, I should say, on this pandemic, where it's one thing just from a health, uh, your individual, of your community, and then everything that, that's uh, the dominoes that fell past that in terms of supply chain and uh, chip shortages and, and everything along the way that, that was just exaggerated through all of this. So anyway, thank you, Christina.